Hi, and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to look at the equality testing problems when we are dealing with floats. And we saw a little bit of that in the last video where I showed you that in the code section. And let's take a quick look at this now and see uh, again what the problems are. So we saw that we can have some weirdness in our code if we try and use equality testing with floats. Now, this is not a Python bug. It's just simply a result of how numbers are being stored using binary representations, real numbers, right? So floats. So it's not a bug in Python. It will be the same in other languages as well, but it could be a bug in our code if we don't know how to deal with it and how to work with it. So again, that very simple example we looked at in the last video, let's say we set x equal to that summation and y equal to 0 0.3. Now, in our minds, when we look at this and we're looking at these decimal representations, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, these are decimal representations. But remember that behind the scenes, they're actually being stored as binary representations. And if we try and write x equals equals y, then that expression will actually evaluate to false. Those are not equal numbers. And so if we don't realize that and if we do expect these floats to be equal, then there's going to be a bug in our code. Now we can look at what the numbers are, like x, well, it's this number here, y is this number here. As you can see, they're not exact. That's their internal representation converted back to decimal, but we can see they're not the same. And that's why it evaluates to false. Now using rounding isn't necessarily going to solve the problem either, depending on how you use rounding, because you can't expect round 0.1 comma 1 which is rounding 0.1 to one decimal point, and we'll take a look at rounding in a future video. But that representation of this number here, well, that's the same as 0.1. It, it can't be, you know, a better or a more precise representation. It's going to be the same. So if we try and do something like this, well, we end up with the same problem. This also evaluates to false. But you could use it if you use it around the entirety of the left-hand side and right-hand side of your equality comparison. So you could write it this way instead. You might say round this summation to five decimal points or five uh, digits after the decimal point and test whether that's equal to round 0 0.3 to five digits after the decimal point. And obviously that will be true. So that's one way of doing it, but this isn't very flexible. Right, you're just rounding basically. And then we also get into issues with rounding because what does rounding mean? And as we'll see later, it's not, you know, necessarily what we're accustomed to with rounding. So there's probably a better way to do that. But at this point, we have these two methods. We can round both sides of the equality expression to some, you know, number of significant digits. So something like this. But more generally, we could use an appropriate range, let's say some value, let's call it epsilon, within which two numbers are considered or deemed to be equal to each other. So formally, the definition would be something like this. For some epsilon greater than zero, epsilon is your choice. You can pick it as small as you want, but a positive number. So 0 0.0001, if you want numbers to be within 0 0.0001 of each other. Then A will be equal to B, if and only if the absolute value, the distance between A and B is less than this epsilon value you specified. So as long as the difference between the two numbers is less than some small, you know, positive number, then we can consider the two numbers to be equal. They're approximately equal. They're close to each other. So you could write your own method. Let's say def is equal. We pass in the two numbers X and Y. We pass in this tolerance, this epsilon value, and we look at the absolute value of x minus y, and we use the floating point absolute value that's in the math module, and we test whether that's less than that epsilon we passed in. If it is, they're close. If it's not, they're not considered close. So this can be tweaked by specifying that the difference between the two numbers be a percentage of their size. In other words, the smaller the number, the smaller the tolerance. The larger the number, the larger the tolerance. In other words, are two numbers within a percentage of each other, right? Within a certain percentage of each other. This is just a tweak. Instead of, you know, using an absolute value here, we're using a relative value. 
Now, there's a reason why we want to do that, and we're going to get into that in a minute. And we, are, however, have to be careful because this looks pretty straightforward, right? Even this one looks very straightforward. This one's maybe just a tad more complicated, but there are issues with both of these, right? They look very simple, but there's actually some minor issues that we're going to have to resolve using these two approaches. And typically it occurs when the numbers are very close to zero versus numbers that are away from zero. And let's take a look at that. So let's start by using absolute tolerances. So that epsilon that we talked about. So again, let's take our typical example. And if we, you know, print out X to that number of decimal uh, values and print out Y, that's what we get. Now the difference between them is this small number here. Okay, that digit five is in the 17th position after the decimal point. Let's take a look at another example where A and B now are the variables and we're looking at 10,000.1 plus 10,000.1 and so on and then B is 30,000.3. So technically we would expect when we're looking at decimal representations A to be equal to B just like we had X was actually equal to Y. Now if we print those numbers out with more precision then we'll notice that the difference between the two again they're not exact and the difference between the two is this small number here, where this digit 3 is the 12th digit after the decimal point. Now, let's say that we had defined a tolerance to be 10 to the minus 15, right? Which is this number here. Because when you use an absolute tolerance, you, you can't change that tolerance as the numbers, you know, for A and B or X and Y change. You, you, you're keeping the same tolerance. You don't know you know, how would you know that, oh, well, I should make the tolerance 10 to the minus 5 here and 10 to the minus 15 there, right? We don't. That's where the relative tolerances will come into play. That's why we bring that in. But for now, we're using an absolute tolerance. So if we do that, then if we make this test that the absolute value of x minus y, these x minus y, is less than the absolute tolerance. Well, the absolute tolerance is this number over here. And as you notice, Right? The absolute tolerance is at this position. The first significant digit is at this position, which means this delta is less than the tolerance. And so that will evaluate to true. But take a look at the second example, where we look at the absolute value of A minus B. Right? And now we're looking at that delta, basically, and comparing it to that absolute tolerance. Well, the delta is greater than this, del this uh, tolerance. So in fact, this will actually evaluate to false. So we have a problem because technically if we look at this, we probably would consider these two numbers to be close enough, right? Why? Because it's a large number to the left-hand side. So in relative terms, these two numbers are close. In relative terms, these two numbers are close, right? But in absolute terms, when we have to specify an absolute tolerance, then these two numbers are close, but these two are not. Hence why we probably want to also look at relative tolerances. So let's take a look at that example again, right? So the same two examples. And let's say we specify a relative tolerance of some percentage, 0.001%, which is 10 to the negative 5. In other words, that's the maximum allowed difference between the two numbers, but relative to the larger magnitude of the two numbers. So we're going to make that, we're going to calculate an absolute tolerance, but it's going to be based on the magnitude of the numbers we're looking at. So we'll look at, let's say, A and B. We'll look at the larger of the two numbers, calculate what is, zero, what is it, you know, what is 0.001%? What does it mean to be within 0.001% of the larger of the two numbers? If that second number is within that amount, then they're considered close. So let's just take a look at what that means. That means that we're going to calculate an absolute tolerance, which is going to be our relative tolerance times the maximum magnitude. We don't care about the signs, right? We only care about, I mean, we'll care about the signs when we look at the difference between the two numbers. But when we're looking at the tolerance, we only need to look at the magnitude of the numbers. So in this case, the tolerance would be, if we use this formula here, would be 0 
And in the second example, our tolerance would be much bigger, 0.3, right? So you notice that the tolerance that we would use as an absolute tolerance is smaller here than here. And that kind of makes sense because this is a much larger number. So to be within 0.001% means that, you know, we can be a little bit more off than in this example here. And again, it makes intuitive sense when we look at it mathematically. Yeah, you know, these two numbers are close if they're within a certain amount. But if, you know, if these are within a certain amount after the decimal point, well, that's okay because it's a big number in front. So in this case, if we calculate that now using this toler these uh, tolerances we calculated here, if we use the same formula as before that we used for an absolute tolerance, that will evaluate to true. And the second one with a minus b will also evaluate to true. In other words, success. We've solved it. But have we? And the answer is not quite. We're not quite there yet. Remember I said it gets tricky. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at this example, right? So we have x, which is a number that's very close to zero. And for simplicity, I made y actually exactly equal to zero. So x is 10 to the negative 10. Now, if we use a relative tolerance here, then let's even if a large one, you know, 0.1%, that means 10 to the negative 3. Well, what does it mean? According to that formula, that means that the absolute tolerance is going to get calculated as the relative tolerance times the maximum of those two numbers. Well, y is 0, so it's always going to be the relative tolerance times the magnitude of x itself, which is going to work out to 10 to the negative 13. In other words, we want these two numbers to be within 10 to the negative 13 of each other. But look at this number. It's 10 to the negative 10. So if we do that calculation, that comes out to false, right? And it will always be the case. Because these numbers are close to zero, and this one in this case is actually equal to zero, this tolerance we calculate here is always going to become greater than the actual difference between the two. So using a relative tolerance technique doesn't work well and sometimes doesn't work at all uh, for numbers that are close to zero, right? So using absolute and relative tolerances in isolation, right, uh, using either one or the other, makes it very difficult to get a solution that works kind of uniformly across any number you might encounter as your program is running. So we can combine both methods. That's the better approach. We're going to combine both methods where we're going to specify an absolute tolerance and a relative tolerance. And then after we've done that, we'll use the larger of the two tolerances, the larger number, right? Because remember, they're always positive. So we're going to take the number that's closer to zero. Uh, sorry, that's further away from zero uh, and use that as our tolerance in our calculation. So in other words, our tolerance will become the max of the relative tolerance times the max of x and y, which was, you know, this thing we calculated here when we were using relative tolerances, and the max with the absolute tolerance that we would specify. So let's see how that really works. Now, if you want to read more about that, it's specified in the PEP 485 document. You can just do a search for that uh, in your browser and you'll see the documentation for that. But basically, it's exactly what we've defined here, where we're talking about using a combination of the absolute and relative tolerances. Now, the math module has that built in for us. We don't have to write that method ourselves. I just wanted to explain to you, you know, how it works, because we need to understand what those parameters are in this method called is close. Again, you can reference PEP 485 if you want to get, a, you know, an explanation of how this works. But Essentially, it's just what I've said. So the is close method is in the math module, and it takes in at least two parameters, the two values that we want to compare. And optionally, you can specify the relative tolerance, which will default to 10 to the negative 9, and the absolute tolerance that defaults to 0, which means that when that happens, it's the same as if we hadn't specified an absolute tolerance at all. So in other words, by default, if you just say is close a comma b, you are ditching the absolute tolerance part and you're only using a relative tolerance comparison, which may be fine, but remember that doesn't work well for numbers that are close to zero. 
So a word of warning, if you do not specify the absolute tolerance, it is zero. And you'll face that problem that we saw just now when using relative tolerances with numbers close to zero. So let's take a look at an example. Let's take two numbers that are quite different from zero, right? They're far away from zero. And if we look at math.isClose x comma y, so we let these defaults, you know, fall through, then that will evaluate to true. That's great. Now let's take two numbers that are close to zero. And if we evaluate math.isClose a comma b, then that will be false. And that's because the absolute tolerance is zero, and therefore the relative tolerances is creating a problem here. So probably not a good idea to not specify the absolute tolerance unless you know that that's what you want. So you should probably always specify the absolute tolerance until you know you don't need it. So if we use the absolute tolerance and specify it, let's say, you know, we'll use 10 to the negative 5, then this will evaluate to true. And using the same absolute tolerance here, and the is close will also evaluate to true. So that solves the problem. It also works well in situations like this. Let's say we have this number here, you know, 1000.01, 1000.02. We probably consider those numbers close to each other, right? They, Yeah, they're within 0 0.01, but look, it's, it's 1000. So relatively speaking, they're close to each other. And if we look at this is close function, we'll specify a relative tolerance of 10 to the negative 5 and an absolute tolerance of 10 to the negative 5. That evaluates to true. That makes sense. We would expect that. However, look at these two numbers, 0 0.01, 0 0.02. They are also within 0 0.01 of each other. But we probably wouldn't think of those numbers as being close because relatively speaking, they are not close to each other, right? That's a pretty big difference if you look at it in relative terms. And if we use the same expression, right, the same tolerances, as before, and that's the important part, is that we don't have to change the tolerances at all, then this will evaluate to false. So that's the advantage of combining relative and absolute tolerances into one method and using that. And when you want to compare floating point numbers, don't use the equals equals, you're going to run into issues with that. Use the is close method in the math module, that will give you what you're looking for. Are the numbers close enough? because you can't count on them being exact. Now, if you want numbers to be exact, then use fractions, use rational numbers, like fraction, you know, one over three. We saw that in the fractions uh, section. So use those things. Uh, we also have the option of using decimals, and we'll look at decimals in a future video coming soon. But for now, if you're working with floats, use is close to compare for equality between floating point numbers. You should also play around with these a little bit. I think, you know, after this video is finished and after we've gone through the code, play around with different numbers and test it and see how it works. Start getting a feel for it. It's kind of important that you, you kind of have an understanding of how this works so that when you're writing your code, you kind of know what tolerances you want to use. Sometimes the tolerances are actually dictated by the problem that you're working on, but sometimes you have to come up with them yourself and so, you know, you want to try and strike a good balance. So let's take a look at some code. We'll do that in the next video. And I'll see you in a bit.